Third Sunday in Ordinary Time A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah First the Lord degraded the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali but in the end he has glorified the seaward road the land west of the Jordan the district of the Gentiles Anguish has taken wing dispelled is darkness for there is no gloom where but now there was distress the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom a light has shone you have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest as people make merry when dividing spoils for the yoke that burdened them the pole on their shoulder and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed as on the day of midian the word of the lord A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulon and Naphtali, 
that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. The third Sunday in Ordinary Time. The first reading comes from Isaiah 8, 23-9-3. This passage speaks about how the land of Zebulun and Naphtali were degraded, but then they saw a great light. This was in the north of Israel, and this was a territory that was partially inhabited by pagans. In fact, it would be a Jewish village and there would be a pagan village. And it was considered somewhat unclean by the people who lived in Jerusalem, that things that came from Galilee were not quite as good as those that came from Judea. That's why it's very important to hear this biblical passage from the Old Testament, which speaks about how glory would come from Galilee. Because remember, Jesus came from Galilee, came from Nazareth. And we'll see in the Gospel that Matthew has to show how this was already foretold in the Old Testament. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians 1, 10-13 and 17. Paul speaks about how the community has to be united because there's divisions in the community. Corinth had a group that believed that they had a special revelation of the Holy Spirit. We could call this a Gnostic tendency. The word Gnostic means to have special knowledge, a special revelation. And these people felt that they were totally spiritual, so they were better than others. And they were creating divisions in the community. We're the chosen ones, you're not quite so good. In the community, you hear slogans. I'm for Paul, I'm for Apollos, I'm for Cephas. Cephas meaning Peter. I'm for Christ. Now when they say I'm for Christ, it's not that they belong to the Orthodox group. It's simply another slogan. These people have been creating divisions. And Paul says divisions are not from the Spirit. The Spirit brings unity. What they're manifesting is their own arrogance, their unwillingness to use the gifts of the Spirit as a gift, but rather to use it as a source of power. In fact, he says, who baptized you? It was in the name of Christ that you were baptized. And Paul did not speak the wisdom of human eloquence. Before he came to Corinth, he spoke in Athens at the Areopagus. And he tried to use Greek philosophy, but it didn't work. So when he came to Corinth, he spoke in the simplicity of the message of the cross. It's a message that many people would not want to accept, but it's the very message these people need to hear. They think that they're filled with the Holy Spirit, therefore they have power and authority over others. Jesus came into the world not to have power and authority, but to serve, to die out of love for others. So that should be the example that they follow, to die out of service for others. The Gospel is from Matthew 4, 12-23. We hear that Jesus came from Galilee, which is the fulfillment of that passage that we heard in the first reading, about a light rising in Galilee. Remember, the people in Judea didn't want to hear that there was a prophet in Galilee. That was beyond their belief. So Matthew has to show that this was already foretold in the Old Testament. And then in the second part of the passage, we hear how Jesus calls two of the apostles, Simon, whom he calls Peter, and Andrew. They're fishermen, he's going to make them fishers of men. And then he calls James and John. Now, they are already fishermen. Jesus takes the natural talent that's already in their heart and he transforms it into something greater. 
That's what he does with us. God has already given us many talents. He expects us to use those talents in service of others. If we use them only to build ourselves up, then we're like those people in Corinth who use the spiritual gifts to feel superior to others. That's not what Jesus taught us. Jesus taught us that every gift we received is to be given as a gift, as a way of building up the community. And may God bless us.